<clears throat> what up, though, y'all? What up, though? It's your boy Bill. I'm not reading no comments today. Um, I'm just about to go straight through the story because the comments be distracting me sometimes. I appreciate all y'all, man. I love y'all. Y'all don't know. I love y'all, bro. I appreciate the support. Appreciate y'all for being here. I appreciate y'all for allowing me just to, you know, this is therapeutic for me. Um, before I even get into this story, I just want to tell y'all, if you have not followed that other channel, Storytime with Bill, go check it out. Um, what I was trying to tell y'all yesterday, but my signal was messing up because it was storming real bad. Hold on. My signal was messing up because it was storming real bad, and I don't know if y'all understood what I was saying, but all I was saying was... I had randomly thought about my last chain gang game victim and I reached out to her and uh, I apologized. I, I asked her, I hope you forgive me. Um, and I sent her the couple hundred back that I finessed her out of five years ago, plus $200. And I just told her Merry Christmas. Hope you forgive me. I told her I was just young, immature. I was in my, uh, I was in a state of survival. When I did that, I just wanted the money. I didn't care how it came or who I offended or who mouth I took out of. I just wanted it. And when I said, I hope you forgive me, she said, I honestly do. And I appreciate you for uh, being a man of your word. And that was it. So, what up though, y'all? It's your boy, Bill. <clears throat> so, Big bruh, and for those of you who know, um, whenever I say big bruh, I'm speaking of, I feel like this light too blue on my face. I'm going to turn one of these off because that's just too much light right there. I might be too close to it. I don't know. Whenever I say big bruh, I'm speaking of somebody that is in a you know, in a higher positioning over what it is that we used to run with. Yeah. So big bro called a meeting one day. He calls a meeting. Everybody get in there. He looking dead serious. He say, hey, y'all remember what happened last year, right? So everybody looking around like, shit, a whole lot of stuff happened last year. The hell you talking about? He say, no, nah, I'm talking about with evil folks. So now everybody like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're trying to see what's the relevance of this now. Evil folks ain't been in this dawn for years. He's still at this prison. He's on, um, what the hell he was on? Uh, evil folks was on the tier program. So he's, he's, he's still in this dorm. I mean, not this dorm. He's still in this prison. But what that got to do with anything now? Dude was like, well, she, you know, I put that paperwork in on him. We reached out to him and told him, don't come back out the hole. Stay back there till he transfer. He bucked. He actually said he supposed to be coming out the hole any day now. Um, we told him, don't come out here screaming GD. He bucked. He said he GD to the day he die. And, and he don't give a damn about none of that. You know what I'm saying? So he like, I already let everybody know in every dorm on the compound if he come into your dormitory, smash him on sight. It ain't no talking. It ain't no nothing. We pop him. So he talking, saying what he's saying. Now, the last situation evil folks had going on, he got to stabbing it out with some people about, uh, he was wrong, though. It was some gambling. He owed somebody his shoes or something like that. They ended up stabbing each other out in the room. Bruh told us, don't go down there. Whoever go down there in violation. It was about four of us that went down there. Two of them transferred. It's only two of us left. We both went to the hole, but we, but we both ended up coming back. We only stayed in the hole like a month. The man looks at me. You. You. And points to me and point to little bruh. And say, y'all get ready for y'all violation. So, bro, I don't say nothing. So, I'm like. So, I'm like. Violation? Violation for what? He was like, shit, that violation you supposed to been got. 
when y'all uh disrespected my what he said disrespected my when y'all disrespected my uh, directive and, and tried to go down and assist that man anyway i'm like bro it don't work like that bro he like what you mean i'm like bro it's been a year it's been a whole year even if i was wrong you're not finna sit here and tell me I'm about to take a violation, folks, for something that I did a year ago when I have been back in this dorm with you for over 10 months now. There is no way you finna try to do that. This stuff got time stamps on it. You can't just do nothing like that. So he was like, all right, all right, we're going to see. So he looked at bro. He like, what's up? What you going to do? Bro dropped his head. I'm going to just take my violation, bro. I'm going to just take my violation. So I'm looking at bro like, so I'm explaining to bro. I'm telling him like, bro. You don't got to do that. I'm telling him in front of all these folk. So, bro, get done with the meeting. Everybody flush out the room. He like, bro, y'all go tighten up. Get y'all stuff ready. Pull back up here. So, I look at him. I'm like, bro, I'm not playing, bro. I'm not taking a violation. I didn't. That don't count like that, bro. It does not count like that. It don't work like that. He like, all right, say less. He was just too calm about it. He was like, all right. He was like, all right, say less. So, I go. To a little bro room, who, who finna get the violation? He changing his shirt, putting his shoes on. I'm like, folks, what is you doing? He was like, bro, I'ma just take my violation, bro. I don't want no issues, bro. I don't want nothing. I don't want no smoke, bro. It is what it is. I'm like, bro, that was over a year ago. This man just trying it now, bro. He like, yeah, but I don't wanna be looked at like a scary ass nigga, you feel me? I'm like, how? He like, bro, if I turn down a violation in front of a bunch of brothers, it's just gonna make me look like I'm scared of conflict. It's gonna make it look like I'm 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 really scared of, you know what I'm saying? I'm scared to fight or something. I'm like, bro, they know you not scary. They know you. They know how you coming. You done been handled situations before. So who is gonna who gonna say you scary? Who gonna feel like you scary? Anything like that. So he like, bro, I'm just telling you my reasons for why I ain't finna do it, you know what I'm saying? While we talking. He like, yeah, his big bro, he slide in. He like, all right, look, how about this? I got something for y'all. I got something for y'all. Either y'all take the violation or when evil folks come down here, if he come in this dorm, it's y'all job. Y'all responsible. Pop him. Get him up out of here. <clears throat> I'm going talking over, bro. I'm like, bro, why would you put that on us? Why would you assign that to us? He like, I'm saying, well, well, she, you act like you don't want to handle business. I'm like, bro, I don't mind handling business, but the business I handle, number one, got to make sense. And number two, it got to make sense. I'm like, bro, you talking about, you, you trying to send somebody at somebody that, number one, you know is retarded all the way. Like, he probably would take it there. Like, like somebody might die type situation. Even if evil folks wasn't a person that was crazy like that. Even if evil folks wasn't a person that was crazy like that. I just, when I was in position, bro, and unfortunately I did have to make calls sometime to have things done to people. I always pick people that I know has a life sentence in the prison to do it. I always pick people that I know ain't never getting out no way. I never pick nobody that's finna go home next year or they got two years left to go post somebody out with the candy bar. That just don't sit right with me, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to explain this to him. He's not hearing it. He's like, well, she, all right, can't get the violation. I'm like, bro, I'm not taking no violation. He was like, all right, say less. He told little bro, he said, come on. So I go out there. I stand on the range and talk in front of bro, though. He go in there. I see three more guys flush in there. It's quiet in there. Quiet for a minute. I hear them make a loud noise, and then I hear, Brrr. I go down there and walk over there. It's another brother standing outside the door. I look through the door, bro. When I look through the door, it pissed me off, bro. Cause look, bro, it's little, man. He was little, bro. And some of them guys in there, I mean, they wasn't all big and swole, but they wasn't just... No little guys, neither. You know what I'm saying? Just seeing them, just punching all on the man. Man, some of these guys wasn't even in this dorm last year when this stuff happened. They don't even know what was going on. They just following whatever, you know, somebody say so. It pissed me off so bad, bro. 
I went to thinking. I said, you know what? I might run in here and, 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 and catch this with these folks. Just on the strength of, number one, bruh being so cool, calm, and collective about it, talking about, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So it's like, I see you got the rest of these guys in here brainwashed. So it's like, shit, ain't no telling what you might try to do to me if I don't come in here and do it. That's number one. And number two, I really want to get a little get back for bro. Because bro, they ain't here beating his ass, bro. I mean, he trying to fight back or whatever. But bro, he, he's just not performing. He's just not performing, bro. And... I know I would have went in there and performed. So I'm really sitting here trying to debate, but I don't want to do it because I don't want to give Big Brother benefit, not the benefit of the doubt, but I don't want to give him the satisfaction to be able to say, yeah. If y'all in here, tap that like button for your boy. He can push it out and let all the other members know we live. I don't want to give Big Brother satisfaction to be able to say, oh yeah, you see, CB act like he was bucking on a violation. See, I made his ass get in there. I didn't want to give him that. But at the same time, like I say, bro, I'm looking at how they swinging on little bro. And it kind of pissed me off a little bit, bro. And I'm just sitting there thinking, contemplating, contemplating. That thing, you know, they stopped the door swing open. When the door swing open, little bro come walking out, man. He nodded up. He bleeding. His damn eye look like a beat on stung him 156 times. And I looked in there at them, and Big Bro was dapping them all up. That right. That right. That right. All this type of stuff. And I was just like, bro, fuck it. I snatched my shirt off, went in the room. When I went in the room, one of them was like, hold on, hold on. So Big Bro turned around. He didn't see me coming in there. So he's smiling now. He moved back over here to the sink where he was standing at when Lil Bro was in here getting violated. He's standing like in the corner of the sink. I come in, you got the toilet right here, you got the two bunk beds pushed that way, you got the two locker boxes right here, you got the three guys, one like on the box, one in the middle, one like leaning up against the bed. I could tell they ass out of breath too. So I'm like, all right, come on, let's do it. Come on, let's get the violation out the way. Let's do it, come on, let's do it. So bro who outside the door, he closed the door. One of them say, hold on, hell no, hell no, but we gotta rotate, we gotta rotate. No, ain't no goddamn rotate. So what the rotate means is a new batch of people comes in here. No, nah, hell no. Nah. I don't need no three niggas that's just as energized as me. <laughs> I need you three tired niggas. <laughs> <coughs> the only way the whole rotating thing works anyway is if, let's just say for instance, I, let's just say for instance, you got three people that got an issue with me. And all three people say, I want to fight CBL. So I go in there and fight one on. And then I might be too tired or I might be a little hurt or whatever. Y'all still finna fight, but it might, it might not be me. One of my guys might step up and say, hell no, nah, but we're going to rotate. I'm, I'm going to come in here for him. But when it's three on one, you know, rotating, bro. It's too many of y'all. It's too many of y'all. It's too many of y'all to be talking about some damn rotating. I need y'all three. Same way y'all was just punching on little bro and all that, bro. I like I say, bro. I ain't I ain't saying I'm goddamn Roy Jones or nothing, but y'all not finna do me that way. And y'all niggas tired. And y'all been in here slick hitting each other because the room's so little. So y'all might be a little injured too. And I'm fresh with it. Oh yeah, let's do it. What my boy Joe T be saying? Any day. <laughs> so. Big bro like, nah, let's do it. Hold on, let me start the clock. Hold on, he had a little clock. I think we went in there for like 60 seconds. Man, he start the clock, and we went at it. We handled business. They asses was tired. One of them was trying to grab me. Wasn't none of that going on. So the 60 seconds was over with. We coming out. I'm really mad as hell at Big Bro. I go around to the little bro room. I'm hollering at him. He over there trying to get himself together. He bleed. I'm like, bro, the only reason I went in there because I seen how them folk were doing you. I said, if I wouldn't have seen that, bro, I would have bucked. I would have been ready to buck on the whole situation and whatever, you know, whatever the outcome of it, bro, that's just what the outcome would have been, bro. So, uh, 
He was like, yeah, I appreciate that, bro. I just wanted to straighten my face. And then I was just trying to explain to him, like, it don't work like that, bro. It's time stamps on stuff. People can't just violate you for something that happened a long time ago. It is this shit like the law. It is a statute of limitations on any offense, damn near. You know what I'm saying? So he like, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm just so blow that bitch, bro, that he even pulled that stunt because I know for a fact he knows better than that. You know what I'm saying? I know this for a fact. Later on that day, bro, right before the sun started to go down, you got people coming from ID with the big cart in the cert team walking down this way. Somebody at the window who was standing down there at the window looking, screaming, evil folks, that's evil folks out there. Look, y'all, that evil folks. When they go to screaming at all the GDs took off running down there by the window. I'm no, I think I'm damn near the only one didn't go down there, bro. Came out the room, I was just leaning up against that rear. I see all them going down there. He went in the dorm next door. The very, so dude, you know, called another little meeting, like, all right, I'm gonna have to, uh, you feel me? All y'all better goddamn be on point, type stuff, whatever the case is. So now it's like two or three people done said little comments, like, shit, be bro. Man, that being it supposed to be got handled, ain't it? Yeah, we got to handle it now, bro. You know what I'm saying? So now he like, damn, bro, what y'all got going on? Y'all niggas like, y'all scared to handle the business or something? I don't, I don't know, bro. It's, it's, it's so many ways to look at it. So I don't really know. I still wasn't feeling bit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Because that was just too lame what he did. Now, I'm not trying to justify. Well, am I trying to justify? Well, anyway... Very next morning, they call breakfast. I purposely leave out. When I step outside, even folks standing at the window, I already knew he was going to be. I looked around to make sure it wasn't none of these guys out here with me. Wasn't none of them out here. Uh, it was just some other people coming out here. And I went over there to the window. I said, what's up, bro? You good? He said, hell yeah, man. These niggas ain't talking about nothing. They going to tell me last night I got to get on the door. He said, man, I told him he was talking about big bro. I was like, hell yeah. He said, keep a G with me, G. He he got down. He plotting on me. And he, he, he trying to have y'all work one on me. And I looked around again. I said, hell yeah. He said, I already know it. I already know it. I'm going to be over there. I'm going to be over there. I'm going to come over there. So I was like, sheesh. Eventually go up the walk, go on about my business, go to breakfast. Bro, by the time I came back from breakfast, the time I came back from breakfast, approximately 30, 40 minutes later, even folks in the dorm dragging his property to the steps, trying to walk up the steps. It's the guys in here looking crazy. They looking spooked. When I say spooked, they are looking spooked. Ain't nobody did nothing to evil folks. Big bro came out the room. Evil folks got to the top of the steps, dropped his property, casually walked down there. He was like, Walking a little funny, like slick with a little limp. I know he probably had something on him. He's walking casually down there, stood next to Big Bro on the rail, sat there for about 10 minutes talking to him. Big Bro went in his room, came back out with a Chris Brown CD. <coughs> came back out of his room with a Chris Brown CD, gave it to Evil Folk. Evil Folk rolled it up right there and lit it up, and they just finished talking. Now, you sat here doing all this talking. Talking about is people scared of evil folk. Evil folk got to get smashed on sight. And you sitting right here talking to him, kicking it with him, giving him uh, Chris Brown CDs. So either you the one scared of evil folk for real, or you trying to play the mind games and just and just use your puppets. You trying to use your puppets and make everybody else get their hand dirty, but you ain't finna get your hand dirty. You know what I'm saying? They get done talking. I'm standing in front of the rail in my room, by my room. Evil folk come down there. We go to chop it up. He asks me about his roommate. What type of person is his roommate? Because that dude, he had been at the prison for about five or six months. And I was just telling him it was a white guy. I'm like, shit, he cool. He seems straight. He ain't, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he, uh, he don't be having nothing going on. He just be cool and quiet, mind his own business and stuff like that. He's like, okay, cool, cool. So, what's happening now, bro, for like the next week? Every time evil folks is like sleep, or every time evil folks is 
Got the tissue in it though, used in the bathroom. Big bro, slick, had these little side meetings. Where like he trying to call people together and talk to people about stuff got to do with evil folks or this, this, and that, the evil folks. And one day, bro, I just decided to go ask him because I'm like, bro, people doing all this back and forth. You know, one minute you said this going to happen. I've been told you I'm not going to do it. But one minute you say this going to happen, then you turn around, you cool with him. He been in the dorm for a week. You know what I'm saying? So I go down and I say, hey, bro, straight. He said, who? I said, evil. He straight. He said, man, hell no, nah, he ain't straight. He said, well, matter of fact, I guess he is. I guess he is after this. I'm like, what you mean after this? He said, bro, I G alone for I G wrong. Hey, I done got hot as hell. I got to turn on this AC. He said, I G alone for I G wrong. So I said, what the hell you mean by that? He basically told me that, you know, um, I do my own thing because y'all don't want to do the right thing. So I'm like, what the hell you mean by that? He like, bro, I been told y'all what the what the what the play was. I'm like, what's the play? He said, you and little bro supposed to be handling that business. Oh, nigga, now you want to try to switch it up and put it on me and little bro? I said, no. You said either we take a violation or we handle the business. I told you off the dribble that wasn't gonna happen, but I took the violation. So that automatically takes me out of the do something to evil folk equation. I'm glitching. Ah, oh, shit. It's still doing it. No, nah, he was in another dorm. He wasn't in that dorm. Is it glitching? You good now, though? Let me know. I'm straight now. Big shout out to Bam Harper, brand new member. Essence say still glitching. It's just lagging a little bit as far as visual. But y'all can hear me? Y'all want me to try to stop it or y'all want me to just keep going because y'all can hear me? It's clear now. You good now? Turn that air off. It was working fine till you turned on. Yeah, that's probably. Well, I don't know what the air would have to do with my damn Wi-Fi. They say you good. Keep going. Okay. So I'm like, nah, you said take the violation or do something to evil folks. We both took the violation. So there should be nothing you talk about. Go do nothing to nobody. So he like, bro, you, you could just let the rest of them brothers know uh, as of about 10 minutes ago, I'm straight. You feel me? I'm doing my own thing. I done already put my own paperwork in. So it just is what it is. So, you know, I go out here and tell them. So they make a few calls. People call around just to see. Come find out. He was dead serious. He talked to the people that run the board and told them that, you know, we so... Um, and subordinate and this, this, and that, that, you know, he don't want this positioning. He's still G, but he just doing his own thing. He don't want to have nothing to do with the structure. He want to be taken off of the structure. So now they're in here trying to figure out who is going to be damn near like the leader of us in this dorm. And every time somebody agree for this person or that person, it always be like, man, hell no. Nah. They always find a reason to not let this person or that person have that position. So then it just comes to a point like, shit, we just thugging for a minute. And bro, this dormitory became what they call the Thunderdome. I mean, it, was, it wasn't good to begin with, but it became terrible. It became one of the probably one of the worst dorms on the compound, bro. Cause I mean, as far as the guys I was with, cause it was no structure, bro. It was no structure. It was nobody to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, y'all don't do that. Y'all tripping. Chill out. It was no structure. You know what I'm saying? Evil folks approaches me while I'm standing on the red one day, frowned up, looking crazy. Now y'all know evil folks usually smiling. 
Bro, no matter how serious the situation is, they man be smiling. He say, man, I I'm finna do something to my roommate, G. I'm like, why? What the hell your roommate done did to you? He say, man, they man gay as hell, man. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, what? Now, 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 I'm going to tell you how I feel about a person being gay. In prison, I probably would have no form of, uh, you know, no contact with you, wouldn't talk to you. Probably none of that because, um, you know, I just know how the politics go. And I know that people is just stupid, bro. And they'll try to put stuff on your name and do stuff to you about that. Even on the streets, I, I just don't see me, you know, just just hanging out and kicking it and stuff like that. But it's more, it's different here, bro. Like, I had somebody on my management team um, a couple months back. And, 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 you know, he was fruitier than a bag of Skittles. Nobody had no problem with him, though. It was never an issue. It was never looked upon like, man, get that gay head nigga out of the office, bro. It was never nothing like that, bro. This man done called my phone 2 o'clock in the morning before trying to tell me something about something got to do with the business. And she, you know, like, it, it was never an issue. So it's, it's different in jail, though. People, you know, that's not like that in the prison, bro. They, they just, they, it's, it's just crazy how they, <clears throat> how they look at it or whatever. So he like, man, they man, gay as hell. So I'm like, hi, what you mean? They man pull out his phone. He say, bro, I let the nigga use my phone. I walk in one day, I, I tell him, let me see my phone. I need to do something. I go to my text. He said, I'm getting ready to, he said, I'm getting ready to uh, shoot out a text. And then you know how if a message, you were getting ready to send it, but it didn't send, so you can see it right there in the message box. So I'm like, yeah. He say, man, they nigga texting somebody talking about I can't wait to get out. I can't wait for you to play with my thighs and my nipples. He like, bro, what kind of nigga want a motherfucker to play with their thighs and their nipples? I say, well, even folks, listen, bro, that don't necessarily, I mean, I think that's what you call um, maybe kinky, um, maybe fetishes or whatever the case. I say that doesn't really define a person as gay, though. He, he probably just... You know him and his old lady probably on some freaky type stuff. He like, man, I called the number back three, four, five, six times. Ain't nobody answer. I'm trying to see if it's a girl or not. I was like, well, bro, to be honest, I don't know. I just don't see why. If you let somebody use your phone and they're texting somebody, it don't matter what they texting them, long as they not disres you know disrespecting your phone, having no crazy pictures inside your phone or nothing. I don't even see why you tweaking for real. You know what I'm saying? But I think he just um um big shout out to Jordan Park. I think he's just. Damn, they're bloodthirsty, bro. Evil folks is an evil little diabolical little bastard. And I think too much time went of him, you know, maybe not doing nothing crazy to nobody. And he just wanted to do something. He like, man, hell, I can't wait for you to play and lick on my thighs and my nipple. He was like, you know what? I can even understand the nipple aspect. I can understand that. But your thighs? You want a nigga, you want somebody to play with your thighs and your nipples? He was like, hell no, nah, boy, you got to get up out my room. You can't be in my room. You can't be in my room. So I'm like, let me holler at him. Let me try to see if I can convince him to move out your room or whatever. So he's like, I don't give a damn what you do. He got to get up out of there. So I go in there. You know, this is a little white guy. I go in there. I'm talking to him. I ask him to move out the room. He book. Um, I offered to pay him to move out the room. He said he don't want to go nowhere because he got a good spot made in his room. I left out the room, bro. At that point, I was starting to get tired, bro. Um, I think the next day rolled around, bro. Uh, Clipper Shave came in there. Now, I'm going to tell you what was funny. Not funny, but when I knew something was funny. Evil Folks was outside on the ranch. His roommate comes in the room the same time Clipper Shave coming in the dorm. Now, Clipper Shave is for the people that don't make it to the barbershop or sometimes they don't want to run the, the real barbershop because it's just too much 
movement got to happen for people to go to the barbershop. They got to get groups of people, take them here. They got to make sure these dorm ain't out there with them. So in case anybody got beef, don't nobody get hurt. So sometimes they got a portable big box where all the clippers and stuff go, and they'll just come into the dorm, and the barbers will cut your hair right there. They let you get stuff, shave with, clean yourself up real quick. I'm walking down this way towards where evil folks stand at. I see his roommate shooting the room. The man say, hey, G, I stop over there with him. I say, what's up? He said, hey, do me a favor. I said, what's up? He said, go down there and get the fingernail clipper real quick. But he looking around and his voice got lower when he said that. So I'm like, hold on. Go get some fingernail clipper. I'm like, I ain't got no ID. I just say that just to keep me out of whatever it is you got going on. Because whenever you go buy the trimmers or the clippers or the fingernail clipper, you got to give them your ID so they know who came and got it. Just in case you don't bring it back or it's broke, the police will know who to go get it or whatever the case. So he eventually gets somebody else over there, finesse somebody else over there. He tell them what to go do. Man, they go down there. They get a the man their ID. He get them the fingernail clips. He, he come back up the step. Walk over there, handed the evil folk. Soon he handed the evil folk, evil folk shooting the room. Soon as evil folk shot in the room, bro, you heard something like a thump, like a hard thump. I don't know what it was um, for sure, 100%. But if I had to judge it based off my prison experience, I think somebody got smacked upside the head with something. Um, bro, probably about i say about 12 seconds later, you hear, yo, something on the lines of that. Right after you hear the scream, you hear another thump. You don't hear no more noise. Big bro comes from down this way, looking crazy. He's like, man, where the hell that, uh, where the hell that noise just came from? Evil room? I say, yeah. He said, what the hell he just did? I say, shit, he just... Try to go get some fingernail clippers or something. So he shot down there, snatched evil dough up and went in there, and you hear them arguing, screaming real loud, screaming real loud, evil arguing with bruh. Evil folk keep saying, nigga, get out of my business. Bruh, get out of my room, get out of my business. I don't give a f about nothing you talking about. Get out of my room, get out of my business, bruh. Bruh, get out of my room, get out of my business, bruh. Big bruh come shooting back down there, frowned up. I'm like, what's up? You good? He's like, man, pull up. So I went down there to his room. He got to throw his shoes on. He said, man, that nigga done went too far, bro. He like, bro, I know I resigned from this shit. And I said, I'm a G alone for I G wrong. And I ain't fucking with niggas no more, bro. He said, but bro, that nigga out of control, bro. I'm sick of that nigga. I'm starting to grow a real hate for that nigga. That nigga causes too much harm to people, bro. That's what that nigga does, bro. That man hurts people too much, bro. That nigga is a devil for real, bro. I'm sick of that nigga head, bro. I'm sick of that nigga. I'm finna kill that nigga, bro. Oh, my mama, that nigga finna die. He goes over there to like where his mattress at. And I had to make a split second decision, bro. Because honestly, I didn't want to see Big Bro. I mean, do nothing to, you know, I'm not going to say I didn't want nothing to happen to evil folks, but I didn't want him to just go out like that and go crash out. If you do crash out, there's ways to do things. You know what I'm saying? There's ways around things. There's ways to do things, but not like this, bro. When it's a thousand police right here, you know, whatever it is he got going on in that room, I'm sure he's about to get caught for it. He going to get in trouble for it or whatever the case, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, shit, when he go to reach, I'm trying to tell him, like, hell no, nah, bro. He like, bro, I'm sick of that shit. That nigga's a devil, bro. I'm like, what the hell he doing? He say, bro, the nigga got his roommate in the room using the fingernail clippers, cutting the man nipples off, bro. He said, bro, when I went in there, his roommate laid out on the bed, shit just coming all out. He like, bro, he got a big, long print on his forehead. Evil folks got this big ass bar. Look like he done stole it off of a table. Done used it to knock the man out. This man in there cutting the man fucking nipples. Cutting his nipples off, bro. He like, man, I'm sick of this nigga, bro. 
So I'm like, bro, hold on, hell no. We got, he like, no, bro, because the police get involved. They finna take that nigga to the hole. I'm about to kill that nigga. So he grabbed, what he grabbed? I shot out the door, closed the door real quick. Dude, green light of this door. Like I say, bro, I just ain't want him to do it like that. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, not that way, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I go gather a couple of the guys, and we make a decision to go up there. When we went up there, bro, I guess the dude was just waking back up again or whatever the case was. Because as soon as we got close to the door, that's when you heard that crazy screaming noise again. We pulled the door open, bro. This man, this man is laying back on evil folks' bed. He is bleeding so much, bro. It's like, it's like a very heavy drip. It ain't, it ain't squirting up or shooting out or nothing. It's very heavy and it's just dripping. Bro, I seen the man nipple on the floor. I seen one of them, bro. The other one was like hanging by, hanging by a tiny piece of skin, bro. And um, I guess he was just getting ready to clip that when we opened the door. He jumped up, he grabbed that pole, he went to telling us, so I stepped in front of all of them because he really kind of fucked it with me more than anybody. I stepped in front of them, I was like, bro, ain't nobody coming in here to do nothing to you, bro. Really, we didn't know what we was coming in here to do, to be honest. I'm like, bro, ain't nobody coming in here to do nothing to you, bro. We just trying to make sure you feel me. This man ain't finna die in here. He like, bro, all y'all need to do is get out of my business, bro. I'm like, all right, bro, you proved your point. Just step out the room. Just let me kind of try to make sure, bro, straight. Because we not trying to get locked down, bro. You finna get us locked down. You finna get us in trouble again, bro. Niggas tired of going on lockdown, bro. So I was able to convince him to leave, bro. The man turned, walked to the door, turned back around and said, hey, G, hand me that fingernail clip. He said, hey, G, hand me that fingernail clip. Big shout out to J.R.I. I know I messed up. Thank you for the uh, support. So, so, um, where was I at? Um, he said, hand me that fingernail clip. I look over there, bruh, it's bloody fingernail clip the dude then woke up he ain't even screaming no more bro it's like he's damn near like he can't even believe what's going on he looks down when he looks down he passes out again i guess he can't even believe it i don't know if he was in shock whatever the case he couldn't even believe it so i don't touch the fingernail clippers even folks come over here he reach over here he grab it he wash it off in the sink real quick. He shoot out the room. I snatched some T-shirts out of his locker box, told him to wet it, squeezed it on him, just holding it on him like this. I looked up at them, and I was just like, bro, I hate to say it, but bro might be right, bro. He might be right. And they're like, what? I'm like, bro, nigga might got to do something to evil, bro, because... There's no way. There's no way he bucking like this. Like, we, you know, nigga might just got to pop evil folks for real, for real, bro. Because it, it's like he, this nigga think he's unstoppable or something now. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, y'all know why he did this? He like, why? So dude was waking back up. I'm like, bro, he said, bro was texting somebody talking about, I want you to play with my nipples and play with my thighs or some shit like that. And then one of the other dudes said, what the fuck? What the fuck they got to do with evil folks? I'm like, that's the point, that my exact point that I'm making. That is my point. So, you know, now we ain't here trying to talk to bro. Cause like I said, we ain't trying to have this heat. You feel me? Come on us like this or whatever. So he said he got down. He could kind of play it, just let him get to his room. He going to just hold them shirts on him or whatever the case. So he folk done threw a blanket around this man. Done walked out with him. Yeah, he had to be crazy. Walk out with him so it don't look like he don't nobody see no blood and then even though the blanket over him and walked him to his room, bro. So I went back down there like three, four times just checking on him. You know what I'm saying? And he done, you know what I'm saying? He still got stuff on him, but now he done got to the point where it ain't even, it's still bleeding, but now it's like, it's not bleeding like, 
like uh it's not how it was before it's not just dripping and dripping and dripping and dripping no more it's like when you move it off you can see a little blood bubble up but it wasn't you know it wasn't doing nothing no more going back out there dude one of the guys came over there come to my room like yo they're like hey you got your phone out i'm like shit it's on the charger they're like big bro I said answer your phone real quick so I go over there. I see he didn't call me about 10 times. I answer the phone. I'm like, uh, it's not bleeding profusively. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. I go answer the phone. I'm like, yo, he like, hey, come to the room real quick. I say, bro, I'm not finna come over here for you to be trying to finesse me, telling me nothing. He like, bro, just come to the room real quick, CB. Hang up the phone. I go over there. I'm like, what's up? I put my ear against the door. He said, hey, little bro, I would think about some shit you said, little bro, when you was talking about you know, why would I put you in a position when you ain't got that much longer to go home and this, this, and that? He said, and, bro, that's right, bro. Sometimes as a leader, he said, you know, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes, bro, we 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 pick people that we feel like a handle the business the right way. It's not about who got more or less time. And I understood that. He was like, but, bro, I just wanted to let you know, bro, I got a lot of respect for you. I fuck with you. Um, I had to take time and think about the reason you locked my door. He said, and she said, bro, I just want to let you know I respect you. He said, but I need you to do me two favors, bro. I said, what's up? He said, man, tell that white boy to go to medical. Tell the police that he tripped out and he got down, cut his own nipples off. He got to say some shit, make them think he was wigging out. Tell him to say whatever he got to say. Tell him he did that to himself so they don't do no investigation coming down here messing with us. I said, that makes sense. I can do that. He said, and the second thing I need for you to do, I said, I ain't popping it, though. I thought he was finna say, get my dough pop. I said, I ain't popping it, though. He said, no, nah, that ain't what I need, little bro. But his energy was totally different, bro. Appreciate that, Zan, the man. Thanks for that super chat. Thanks for supporting the channel, family. He like, the way his energy was, he just like had no energy. Like he was drained. He was like, nah, little bro, that ain't what I'm finna ask you. I said, what's up? He said, bro, pack up all your stuff and go to the hole. I'm like, what? Why, the, why would I pack up and go to the hole? He said, see, Bill, bro, I got love for you. And uh, unfortunately, bro, it's finna be a situation in here. It's finna be a, 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 a very serious situation in here. And it's something that I honestly don't want you involved in, bro. He said, he said, I want to see you go home, bro. You feel me? I want you to be with your family. You feel me? All this shit you be talking about doing, just go home, bro. He said, but that's the only thing I'm asking you. Please do for me, bro. Please. So I was like, uh, go to the hole, bro. I'm, I'm just not. What the hell finna happen here that I ain't never seen happen before? He said, it ain't about if you ever seen it happen. It's more so, you know, your affiliation. And when certain things happen, you know, they'll come and try to put things on all kind of people or whatever. He said, bro, I'm just asking you, bro. You ain't got to, but I'm just asking you, do it for me, bro. Just go to the hole, bro. I'm like, how long do I got to stay in the hole? He like, she, you can stay for one day and come back out. I don't care. But usually they make you stay in the hole for 30 days anyway. So I walk over there to the white boy room. I'm like, I tell him to play. I'm like, hey, go to medical, bro. Make sure you don't, you feel me? Just make sure, bro. Go to medical. Tell them folks you uh you cut yourself, you did that shit, you was tripping out, whatever the case. He like, all right. He leave out. I go to my room and I'm sitting here thinking and wondering, what could he be talking about to the point where I got to go to the hole? Out of all people in here, what the hell I need to go to the hole for? HK, the evil folks have a life sentence, yeah. I'm like, what the hell I got to go to the hole for? I'm like, bro, I'm not no bitch. I'm not leaving and going to no hole. Because if I leave and go to the hole, now it's, gonna, it's just going to look funny, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just lying there, lying there, lying there. My roommate got up, went to doing something. He asked me. He was like, uh, hey, you got going on, G? been posted up like that for a couple hours. I said, yeah, bro, I'm just, I'm just thinking about all kind of stuff, you feel me? 
You know, they think about, I'm like, just about when I go home. I just wanted to kind of get out because he said that to me. He didn't say it to everybody else. So I don't know if everybody else know whatever he know, whatever he got going on. So I'm like, uh, I understand why he ain't want you there personally. So I'm like, yeah, bro, I don't know. Because I really ain't trust big, bro. Because it's like, nigga, you just tried to do some lying stuff to me. And, and now you telling me you got respect for me and love for me. You want me to go to the hole. So now I'm thinking in my head, some shit finna pop off. He want me to leave and go to the hole. So then he could back the me on the paperwork later on and be like, yeah, see, Bill saw something was finna pop off. And then he ran to the hole. He abandoned the situation. That's how I'm thinking. I'm like, hell no, but he ain't finna get me like that. And uh, we just went to talking about our time, bro, and stuff like that. My uh, my roommate, I think he had about uh, yeah, about 10 left. Yeah, about 10 more years to go. And uh, we just talking. And, bro, when them folks locked the door that night for lockdown, bro, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was, but it's something that overcame my body, bro. It damn near felt like a something spiritual, bro. And it just was that feeling that I get when I know something ain't right. It was a disgusting feeling, bro. Like, like appreciate that, Bricks220. Thanks for the support, fam. Love the content. Keep shining, bro. It's just like, damn. I don't know, bro. I honestly felt like I didn't need to be in there. I got up middle of the night, started packing my property. My roommate was like, where the hell are you going, G? I said, man, I'm finna go to the hole. He said, go to the hole for what? I said, bro, I just need a break. A break from what? I was like, bro, I just, I just don't want to be in here, bro. I just need a, I just need a mental break. I want to be alone for a while. I don't want to be around people, you know what I'm saying? And after I got done saying what I'm saying, the way he was just looking at me, it just was like, mm hmm, mm hmm, or whatever the case. And he said, I respect it, though. You know what's going on, huh? I was like, going on with what? He was like, shit, what's understood? Ain't got to be explained, or something like that. I'm like, nah, what's going on with what? He was like, come on. He was like, come on, man. You know what's going on, man. Come on, man. Finished packing my stuff up. Next time the officer came around there and counted. Do do do. Hit the window. He like, what's up? I'm like, hey man, I need to go to the hole, man. He like, go to the hole for what? I said, hey man, I think I'm having some. Um, I think I'm having a mental breakdown or something. I said, I keep seeing my dead friends and family. They talking to me. I'm hearing voices. They keep on telling me I need to hurt my roommate. I said, hey man, I need to get out of here now, bro. So he was like, all right, hold on. He finished doing this count. He came back like 10 minutes later. He had a lieutenant and one of the nurses with him. And he like, uh, they like, so do you feeling suicidal right now? I'm like, hell yeah, suicidal and homicidal. So they're like, all right, come on, get up out of here. So they took me out the dorm, took me on strip search. I'm in there butt naked, freezing cold. I was in there for probably 20 minutes, bro. The LT came through that's cool with me. Now, when I say cool with me, I mean done brought the pack for me before. Before I even think about beating on the door to get his attention, man, this man walked straight over there. He said, Bill, man, what the fuck you got going on? I say, look, LT. I say, bro, I did not say suicidal, bro. I said homicidal. I say, bro, please get me out of here. I said, I'm going to keep it all the way real with you, bro. God honest truth. Me and my roommate was getting into it, bro, and I just... I'd rather leave before I hurt that man and do something to him, bro. I'm going to read that uh, super chat when I'm done. I said, I'd rather, I'd rather leave and, and just go to the hole, bro, before I really do something to that man and hurt that man. I said, bro, they lied. They said, I said, uh, suicide. I said, homicide, bro. Homicide, you just supposed to go to the hole. Suicide, you never on the radio. He walked off. He came back with my clothes. Threw it through the flat. He said, you know you finna go to the hole. I can't let you right back in the dawn. I said, yeah, that's cool. LT got me up out of there, bro. Took me to the uh, hole. He was like, all right, man. Yeah, just, you know, just chill, man. You did the right thing. You made the right decision or whatever the case is. So I'm like, all right, bet. We leave. I mean, we go to the hole. Now I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning. They doing breakfast trays. I see they got two people in the shower, I can see like movement, people face coming up to the thing, but ain't no water running in there. So I know that's people that done came to the hole that's just sitting in there or whatever. I'm sitting here eating the tray because I want to see who they is, see if there's anybody I know. It's big, bro. 
And it's my roommate. That was just my roommate. They come in, once he get done running trays, they coming out of the shower, going to their room. Look, bro, my roommate, he went like two rooms down from me. Once he got in the room, I hollered at him on the back window. I asked him like, yo, what, what the fuck going? He like, see, Bill, stop playing with me, bro. You know what's going. Stop asking me that dumb ass question. He stopped talking to me. So I get, I gotta wait until they get done. The officers get done doing too much movement before I pull my phone out because we in the hole. I go to blowing up a uh, big bruh phone. It keep going straight to voicemail, straight to voicemail, straight to voicemail, and then he finally answered. So I know he probably hadn't pulled it out yet. He finally answered. I said, "Hey, bro, what the hell y'all in the hole for?" He said, "Shit, the same reason I told you leave out the dorm. I don't want you involved in it." I say, "Why? Wow, what reason you said that?" He said, we just killed evil folks. I was like, no, bro. He said, hell yeah, me and little bro ran in there by ourselves and did it, bro. He said, but shit, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Everybody that got the GD tag on their name in the system, everybody that was in that dorm, finna fuck around and go under investigation, bro. Everybody that came close by that room we was at, everybody that, that was talking to me when we came out that room, everybody who came in my room to, to, to check on me, anything. Man, you know them folk finna put charges on everybody. They gonna say everybody was a, um, what's it called? Associate? No, not associate. Accomplished somehow. He like, bro, they gonna put it on everybody, bro. And that's why I told you get out the dawn. Cause I know you would have pulled up and tried to see you, tried to stop something, be Mr. Peacemaker, and you'd have fucked around and, and, and got yourself in some trouble, bro. So that's why I really wanted you to leave out the dawn, bro. And I was like, all right, bro, that's a bit. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I don't know. It just felt weird. Like just knowing that. And uh eventually, bro, every single person in that dorm every single person that had a stg which means security threat group which is just any game blood crit gd they label you as an stg anybody that had a stg as gd inside of that dorm over time every single one of their asses came in there bro and they was all saying stuff like, man, these folk talking about, they about to put some charges on me. Or, man, these folk asking me this. Or, these folk say they about to send me to the tent. Or all kind of stuff like that. But I think three of them actually got charges. I think they got like an extra 10 years because they say Big Bird handed somebody the candy bar when he came out the room. And I guess they got dude on camera taking it, trying to go get rid of it or clean it or whatever the case is. And then the other dude went in his room and the other dude went with, with my old roommate, you know, just checking on them or whatever, going to eat, going down to the room where evil folks um, body was at, looking in there, coming out, not saying nothing. They put charges for show on about three, four folks. I know three, four folks for a fact that got at least 10 extra years just for being involved with that. Um, those two both was charged with murder. They were shipped off to Jackson, where they got the high max at, where they're still at right now to this day. And, uh, bro, it just was a very sad and unfortunate situation. And it's just like shit, bro. Um, um, that's why I like the roll dolo, especially now, bro. I want y'all folks to know, especially the younger folks, older folks, whatever, anybody, bro. I want y'all to understand that. If me and you are friends, there is something that I can do. I can go pull the trigger. You ain't pulling nothing. You can still have your life taken away if you do not instantly notify the police of something that I did. But if I'm your friend, you're not going to do that, right? You ain't notifying shit because you feel like you ain't finna snitch on your dog. And then they go give me 50 years and then they give you 15 just because they know you had something to do with it. Or something, you knew something, you seen something, you took the pistol, whatever the case is. Just be very wise, bro, and mindful of 
of the company you keep, bro. The people you hang with. When you want to make a decision to go somewhere and do things, just make sure you know. Now, I'm kind of comparing this more so to a free world aspect, but I'm just saying, bro, just, just make sure you know what's going on and you know what type of people you around. You feel me? Let me go read that super chat, then I'm gone. AJ Neil Bullfighter, been rocking for a little while, bro. Glad to see your growth, G. I work with some younger guys and so love to link with you. Keep grinding. Appreciate it, family. Thanks for that support. Thank you for supporting the channel. It's your boy Bill. I'm gone. I love y'all. Appreciate all my moderators for holding me down while I was uh, telling the story. It's your boy Bill. I'm out of here.